Well, a very good evening to you, my viewer, whoever you may be. On the last video, I was completely cracked, completely clapped out, actually. I had a really, really good night's sleep, which I really needed. Deep dreams, and uh, I do have this recurring dream that comes back quite often. It's me back in the days when I was um, working very hard, wanted to be a, a pro heavy metal musician and I'm playing live and things are going well and people are interested and and then like the lead guitar player like is messing up the song and I'm turning around I'm like god mate like how long have you had to learn that that lead why can't you get it right you're embarrassing me I have this similar dream often, just like the dream uh, when I used to be a security guard. Um, I was so familiar with this particular building, a um, uh, shopping centre that I patrolled. Not just the shops and the shop floor, and but all the little, you know, tunnels behind the shops and the different, you know, the car park and the places at the top of the elevators where all the machinery was and secret rooms filled with all kinds of strange stuff and um, quite often it, it it's my radio I was call sign seven you see and I'll realize like sort of perhaps ten minutes later that my radio is turned down or off and they've been calling call sign seven my old my old call sign call sign seven come in and I'll suddenly switch it on or up and I'm like go ahead base we've been trying to get hold of you for the last uh, Sorry, I'm on my way, and then I get to the control room, I'm in trouble, and th this seems to be a running theme, being in trouble, or... Uh... But then there's the journeys uh, as I explore. You see, there is a, m a kind of metaphor between the... Uh, uh, the structure of the mind and the, the sense of being and a house. I've seen kettles boiling. Oh, I mustn't talk too loudly as a truck driver asleep. He might get angry with me. I don't want to upset anyone, do I? I might have to give him a, a spiritual telling off. You know, I don't want to be handing out too many of those, do I? <clears throat> anyway, this I've, I've noticed this uh, quite often that um, it's like an analogy with the mind, the brain, and the house, and um, because of the deep complexities of this structure that I used to explore and patrol. Um, it becomes a metaphor for my mind and as I break new ground or if I'm bogged down if you like then I'm on the shop floor and I'm in trouble and my radio's not on but when I'm breaking new ground I'm up in the the upper chambers and I've discovered a new room and there's this strange corridor that goes off into darkness and there's like these electrical wires that are hanging from the ceiling like sparking like something out of a movie and as I move down I can like feel a presence or you know something like this this is another <coughs> set of recurring dream dramas uh, that plague me anyway I've had a wonderful day uh, with friends uh, uh, exploring the uh, the Medway megaliths again, good conversation and um, joint meditation. And after they left, I wandered out into the night with my stool. I found a nice spot uh, in, in a field, and the 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 wheat is growing to sort of knee height now in the field. And um, sat there amongst the wheat. And uh, uh, the meditation time is is creeping up now. As I, I think I've said this before, that the when you start to see results, you, you want to go back there more often, and you want to um, you want to explore this beautiful 
life path more you want to be in it more involved in it more and you want to make progress and you want to uh, imbibe that medicine uh, you know, more often I just wish you know I wish I could I didn't have to work and I could just like spend you know a good maybe three or four hours every day in meditation that would, that would suit me just fine and uh, spend the rest of the day making love of course maybe a short break for something to eat I better not say that too loudly that truck driver behind me I think I'm advertising I've had this problem before strange people coming up to the van in the night making strange offers that I most assuredly could refuse but it's it's uh, it's all part of the, um, the drama. What did I turn this? What did I press record for? This time, there was a reason. Ah, oh. yes, talking about this force in nature in the landscape, this vital force, as it might be described in hermetics. I was asked a question today as I described the, uh, the notion of the, uh, you know, the, the druids of old manipulating uh, this force. And um, I have read a little bit that leads me to believe that it was divided elementally and of course it has to be it has to be this is the, the perennial tradition um, but in terms of this unified primal um, essence this uh, this manner this chi um, it's got me thinking uh, I wonder if there is a word uh, that can be found that may um, uh, that may be pointing to uh, this very hidden force. And talking to druids, like um, I'm starting to look like one more every day. I think it's time to shave the beard off now. I no longer have to sleep in five t-shirts, three jumpers, a hoodie, a woolly hat, a sleeping bag, and a duvet. Now I can just we got to that time of year where uh, I can sleep in my slacks and um, I think uh, I think it's time to have a shave maybe we'll do this like a seasonal thing when it's cold bearded when the uh, um, when we hit the uh, the warmer part of the year we symbolically shave the crop I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Well, I'm thinking the same thing more often than I should be, to be honest. And uh, anyway, let's keep it serious. Let's keep it on point. I, uh, oh, as relates to a recent discussion or debate that, that light's too bright in my face there. I, I gave up coffee actually uh, but I did I was forced to grab a coffee because I didn't have enough time to make a cup of tea the other day and it tasted awful and uh, I've noticed how it affects uh, I mean it might be different for different people of course but it it affects the uh, the ability to target precisely in meditation. You know uh, when you fire a rifle and you have to breathe out and then there's that moment of stillness. You don't get too long, but there's a moment where the body is most still where you pull the trigger. Well, it's a little bit like that. You're in that moment of stillness and when you can feel the caffeine in your system there's a kind of wobbling and a, an inability to focus the, the mind c 
completely on the target or, or the mission. I mean, they say that there's caffeine in tea, but it's, it seems to be a different thing. It seems to, it doesn't matter how much you drink, you don't, you don't seem to get that. You see, coffee gives more, but it takes more. Tea is more gentle, if you like. Um, uh, more of a symbiotic relationship than uh, the the uh, the harsh addiction with uh, with coffee. And, um, so this vital force this energy in nature is i can say now 100 percent because of my experience of going back and forth from this place and sometimes i work a little bit well i mean most of the week i'm away from here so when i come back i can feel the difference and i'm starting to notice the subtle difference at different locations and how it uh, interacts with me depending on um, my own energy system if you like and uh, now this location I've talked so much about this location but it was obviously chosen for a reason they, you know the the ancients would have identified that natural liminal space and that um, energetic um, emergence and um, so it seems obvious to me, although you can't prove this by documentation, that um, if you were going to train, you would train where the force is strongest. The monuments would have been placed where the force is strongest. And perhaps the monuments are, uh, well, I'm quite sure of this actually, that they um, embody and radiate this, uh, this very energy. So, as well as being a necropolis, um, and I think the crossover is, um, it speaks for itself, really, that the, um, in terms of that liminal space, that the training would take place in an energetic atmosphere where one is able to commune with the ancestors. How much time? Uh, 13 minutes. <clears throat> Something else that's interesting about this place is it's Blue Bell Hill, but it's not like Blue Bell, all one word. It's Blue and Bell. Now, there's, there is, there is um, mention of the, the Celtic Bell being used in, in ritual. And this does tally with um, visions of my, of my own in the area, right down to the, the colouring. Now, blue, we know, is emblematic of not only the sky, of course, but it's the colour that the body turns um, when, you know, the dead are laid out. Gradually, the body will turn blue. Um, I think it's very likely that sky burials would have taken place here. Now, Blue Bell. So we've got all these connotations taking place. There is the notion of Celtic woad, of being sky clad. And I can't help but draw some kind of subconscious parallel, like I'm being nudged. But when I see all the Blue Bells come up, this time of year and the the woodlands are just filled with this blanket of blue for some reason it makes me think of the ancestors have a very good morning evening whatever you're doing i'm gonna have a cup of tea read my book for a bit perhaps engage in another session of meditatio and then I'm hoping that my dreams will be more satisfying this very night. So uh, I will also wish you sweet and satisfying dreams. <laughs>